the point, uh, I think the principal point behind the uh, prison movement is uh, to prove to the establishment that uh, the concentration camp technique, the reversion to uh, the second dimension of uh, fascism, uh, the terrorist face, but to prove that uh, this terrorism won't work on us, it won't stop our movement, that uh, nothing actually short of death is going to stop our movement. Uh, it's progress to the point now where the, the courts are uh, being, uh, they're in a position where they're, where they're not pressured into uh, into uh, giving us some sort of appeasement and uh, that of course catches the uh, pr prison personnel, uh, staff, uh, the pigs here up in uh, Cross, uh, they have no way at all whatsoever not to protect themselves except through sheer, brutal, open terror. You understand know what I'm saying? Yeah. The, the, uh, the comrades here, they feel, the pigs feel the comrades have lost their, uh, their uh, reservation, their hold. They still feel that? <laughs> <laughs> But they're convinced of it now. See? I mean, after the last week. <laughs> right. I'm talking about the whole state. I'm talking about throughout the state. Mm -hmm. the, uh, you've heard about the, the intentions of strike. The intentions of strike and uh, ask for an increase of wages. What do you call it? The hazard pay? <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait. It catches the uh, uh, prison pigs up in a cross. They know that the courts are in a mood now to appease. They also know that uh, yeah, the comrades don't fear the courts any longer. That forces them right. to revert to uh, terrorism. Not, not terrorism. Just uh, two days ago, they beat one black almost to death in the hospital. One of the things that uh, you know people on the outside are wondering is how you can use your case and other cases to to work as an organizing tool. You know, I mean. Without you know, uh, without bypassing all means, you know, legal means, court means, mass action and stuff like that, how how can people on the outside? Uh, what kind of things can they do to make real changes in that kind of stuff and put checks on them? Well, it fits right in with the monumental problem, the monumental historical problem, the an antithesis of all uh, uh, you know, taking in a whole. Uh, <coughs> Our opinion is that uh, the reason we haven't been able to uh, move forward is because you know left-wing factions can't you know unite. They just haven't been able to unite here in this country or very few other countries. And we, we've been hoping that on our substructural level, the substructural level of the prison movement, we could uh, possibly provide an example for the rest of the movement. Uh, and because the oppression of the let's say the need to unite. In our particular substructural level, is overt, and clear. Mm -hmm. We're faced with overt, clear terrorism, oppression. And uh, being that our need is greatest, we figured that uh, we're we're hoping. We have been hoping that uh, we could, you know, first through the band, you know, leadership of the Vanguard Party, we could first uh, uh, involve the community, show the community that uh, uh, the differences uh, that. Uh, the National Advertising Council has convinced us that uh, our present really are illusion. We want to convince them that the, you know, in the community that uh, the differences are illusion. Of course, we run into some snags. Mm -hmm. The snags uh, being, as far as I'm concerned, being uh, part of the present mentality in general. The things I've noticed, the problems I've noticed, generally center around the fact that uh, people don't quite understand what democratic centralism is. They seem to, uh, now, our ideal is to project ourselves into the future, of course, but uh, at the same time, we have to realize that uh, we have to realize we have to understand that uh, we're not quite all capable of. Uh, 
Well, our opinions are equal, and we have to have some sort of centralism. Okay. Our preference, our preference, of course, is democratic centralism. You know, and people don't understand that that's a necessity at this stage. That's what we're working towards is uh, the point where uh, all opinions will be equal, all men equal. But right now, we have to have uh, the guidance and uh, the purposeful uh, leadership of a, of a vanguard party. Uh, like Lenin says, uh, central committee, you know, general staff of the people. How do you think? How do you think that kind of vanguard party? Uh, can be developed, or do you think that it has been developed in the Black Panther Party? I'm from Black Panther, of course. Black Panther Party. I'm from Black Panther Party. Do you think that the Black Panther Party is a vanguard party for just the black community and the white community? No, no, no. I believe uh, pretty soon uh, all those questions, uh, as far as I'm concerned, will be cleared up. Uh, the party, the paper is going to run a uh, series of uh, articles where I discuss. Uh, yeah, the nature of fascism in general, and in particular, towards the end, the form that it took here in the United States. Uh, in one paragraph or two, you would find a uh, statement that, uh, well, one of my principal beliefs is that um, the fact that we're the most oppressed class, most oppressed segment of, uh, of society. The, the fact that we're at the bottom of the pyramid. Uh, we have to take the initiative. Is that background noise? Yeah, no, that's okay. We're going to have to take the initiative. I feel that, uh, I feel that uh, our job is, uh, is to begin the process. Once the process has begun, once we've provided the yeah. it's my hope, or our hope, that uh, the intercommunal ideal will spread from our community to yours, the other community. But of course, uh, we know what the term vanguard means. It puts us out front. Well, there's one, in one interview by Lane Brown in uh, uh, San Francisco paper, The Good Times, uh, she made a statement that, they asked her what she thought of uh, weathermen and their actions. She made a statement that uh, the weather, she didn't, she said, uh, I don't know what the weathermen are doing, but I know that they're not the party the Vanguard Party because they're not the Black Panther Party and the Van Black Panther Party is the Vanguard Party and thus they're not the Vanguard Party. And mm -hmm. a lot of people were wondering about two things. One, her concept of Vanguard Party and two, uh, the, the reasons that she didn't know what Weatherman was doing assuming that they are engaging in some sort of revolutionary activity. Well, uh, I won't try to second guess for uh, uh, Elaine's uh, definition of Vanguard Party, but uh, I just gave you a brief, uh, 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 yeah, man. I just gave you a brief, uh, summation of, uh, why. Mm -hmm. I feel, uh, why I feel that Black Panther Party and Black, the Black Panther Party, of course, is about the Black organization in the country. And, uh, it's, a, of course, it's really the only Black revolutionary organization in the country, for Um, the reason, like I said, that we have to be vanguard is that uh, we're faced with the uh, we're faced with the uh, with the uh, clear cut oppression, uh, clear cut necessity, objective necessity, objective and subjective conditions are correct in the in the black community for the revolution. Uh, and uh, to get to get to the original question, though, I think that uh, the reason the uh, well, real reason reasoning behind Elaine's statement is that if you if you uh, uh, consider the Fokomoto theory, if you consider the Fokomoto theory, if you go back and consider it, you see that uh, the idea is, is, is uh, the idea incorporates two separate uh, uh, thrusts, a political and military thrust. thrust. The focal motor, the, uh, uh, the initiative, the, the push, the motor of the, of the revolution has to be backed by a political force. You know what I'm saying? When the man steps out and then, and, and, you know, uh, and uh, with the idea of providing an example and there's no one in the background to fill in for, to build dual power, you need to rebuild the, the people's world as he destroys it. Where are you at? Is that for nothing?
Well, that's the question that was posed to Weatherman at that time, and that's why they changed. Yeah, here's the whole thing. The whole thing is uh, the Pokemon theory. The Pokemon, the Pokemon theory incorporates the. Uh, the Pokemon theory incorporates. Uh, Well, it's a monumental idea that uh, calls for some understanding. Uh, the old CP attack side of the weatherman for being kind of revolutionary, and the, the basis for their attack, uh, I think, is a, uh, I think, is a, uh, is altogether uh, incorrect. The real, the real reason why they can't be and aren't more effective is that uh, they have no, uh, they have no. Uh, Organs for uh, 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 political activity. They have no political outlets. Um, the point is, wow, destroying the opposition or the establishment's capacity to produce at that same time. It's supposed to be also rebuilding the people's world. Uh -huh. That's the political, the political people's job. And yeah, there's, listen to that, there's a lot of, uh, in, in terms of the white, uh, male left, particularly the middle class white male left, to many it's a primary form of oppression to them is alienation from life in general and, and seeing genocide go on in front of their eyes and them mm -hmm. in a position of powerlessness even if they wanted to do something, although they've been told that they shouldn't. Uh, that's a very so, somewhat intangible form of oppression, though it's very real, and it's kind of hard to organize around concrete things, you know, to benefit, you know, to set up real programs. How do you think uh, a white uh, white community, the white youth culture community, can organize around the real changes that have to be done around prison reform, about building the party, about building uh, you know, survival programs, pending revolution? Although that means a different thing in white community. Mm -hmm. I mean, survival, you know, the mm -hmm. freaks are surviving, they're getting welfare, and they're smoking dope, and, you know, thinking it's really good. You know what we're talking about. We're talking about objective conditions. And uh, what you're saying is that uh, the objective conditions in the white middle class aren't correct for uh, the political uh, uh, programs and the political thrust that are possible in the black community. Uh, and you're asking for, uh, or you're, you're really asking for alternatives. But uh, I, I feel that when we start talking about objective conditions, I don't think that we should separate a, uh, uh, what I term psychological or subjective conditions too much from you know uh, objective conditions. I'm, I'm saying that a man can get mad enough. A man can get mad enough to fight over uh, uh, what you called uh, uh, just now. Uh, uh, well, let's say uh, uh, U.S. involvement in the in the China and so forth. A man can get mad enough, get mad enough to fight over that. U.S. involvement in what? <laughs> yeah, U.S. Involvement. All right. <laughs> All right. But uh, that whole question follows. That whole question follows uh, the statement I made a while ago. Uh, we'll have to provide the example. And uh, that was one of men's objective. Mm -hmm. We'll have to provide the example. The, the the programs and the organization of uh, of uh, political uh, structures and so forth will have to begin with us. Because that's a follow up of my statement. It, it, it will have to begin with us because the objective uh, conditions are correct with us. And uh, and uh, we're hoping that uh, the other community will be affected in some way. All right, uh, their motivation, like you say, it do doesn't have to be a, uh, it doesn't have to be a overt, uh, let's say, starvation. Hmm? It mm -hmm. could be psychological. Yeah, it goes very deep. Too. Mm -hmm. Like uh, in Berkeley, what, what we've been setting up, or what has been set up for the past few years, is uh, street clinics and street auto mechanics and and those kind of things to organize it from our community. But we find that the people who use that are basically just uh, freaks, you know, mm -hmm. kids, and that the people in Oakland uh, don't relate to them. And, you know, I, we'd like to be able to change that, uh, although they're very you know, skeptical. I, I don't think we should discount either. I don't think we should discount the fact that. Uh, the broad uh, sections of the American middle class. I don't think we should discount the fact that they're 
uh, also economically uh, strained. Economic what? Economically strained. They, they're uh, uh, economic position is far secure. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's clear. That's clear. Mm -hmm. uh, but like the point is, is, is that uh, yeah, the revolution is offering them economic security. Is that, is the, 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 we, I, I'm certain, positive that we haven't gone beyond the point where the uh, uh, revolution no longer in this country uh, 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 is uh, separated from the economic motive, man. No, I don't think it is either. Mm. So sometimes, it, uh, sometimes people don't look far enough, though, and don't look. Of course, of course, the the, the average white collar worker uh, sees only a short term, and the average blue collar worker sees only a short term interest. I understand that, but uh, I believe the political point would be to make him see that uh, there is still a very clear and present economic motive uh, for revolt, revolution in this country. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I won't discount that at all, but like um, in your article on withdrawal, you know, I, one considering that there's in the white movement there's been a lot less uh, national mass actions, you know, like the moratorium thing, rallies for Bobby, <coughs> stuff like that. And there's a lot more small groups with a lot of personal struggle around the way we fuck ourselves over, you know, the way men in the community fucking over women, the way that we're not dealing with you know, the racism that's in us in, in terms of struggling around <coughs> black people's demand. Uh, and so what what's we've ended up with lately is uh, kind of May Day actions. I've been reading about that and that kind of stuff. And there's, on the other hand, the Days of Rage, the Weatherman riots in Chicago, the way people were shot, uh, fighting, you know, pigs and stuff. And every once in a while, people get pissed off enough and riding on, riding on the Avs on, on Telegraph Avenue. And people are out wondering what the... Uh, you know, ramifications of those kind of actions are and what real changes they're going to bring about. I think that any type of, uh, any type of, uh, practice, any type of, uh, mass action is, uh, productive. Because, uh, remember we were speaking of changing attitudes. Uh, we were speaking of, uh, objective and subjective conditions. Uh, uh, the fastest way to change any conditions that aren't correct, I believe, is with uh, trauma. <laughs> keep them in the uproar. You need to keep things uh, disrupted. And uh, let that, let that be the normal say the thing, disruption. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I subscribe to all forms. <laughs> <laughs> I support. I support personally. I support all forms of disruption. <laughs> but, uh, um. But not at the same time. Don't 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 uh, get the mistaken idea that uh, I'm also subscribing to uh, apolitical apolitical actions or apolitical activities, activities that don't have a clear cut political purpose that that aren't working within a clear cut political matrix. Uh, but, I, but I really, in my in my wildest imagination, I, I can't see how any type of disruption in this country wouldn't fall within a, a purposeful political matter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, like there's a, there's a couple of the stages that people go through, at least in the white movement. You know, the first stage maybe be outrage, mm -hmm. finding out what's been going on in Vietnam. That's the very first yeah. they, And not just with Vietnam, but also with the culture, American culture. Yeah. Reading your book, yeah. you know, looking what's going on with the Indians in the Southwest. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I, we could sit here for an hour listen them off, but... Uh, the next stage is how to organize around dealing with some of that stuff, and that's where people fall into a snag. Uh, you know, I got a feeling that people don't understand the concept of process a lot. Oh, mm -hmm. you know? I agree with that. I agree with that. The protracted idea. Uh, my my politics, of course, is uh, well, kind of politics, of course, is a combination of Mao think and uh, and uh, and uh, uh, Gaveras Gavera think. Um, the two-stage revolution, and then, uh, uh, of course, the focal motor thing. Uh, do we need to talk about revolution in two stages? Well, one, one thing. Yeah, yeah. Should be on two stages. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm talking about my theory of revolution in two stages, making the necessary alliance, alliances at first uh, uh, with uh, 
any group or any segment of society that's in opposition to or that's being exploited by the principal uh, enemies. I'm talking about the men who have placed themselves at the center and above society, uh, the fascist manipulators. Uh, first, uh, putting these people together with, uh, in some cases, with uh, you know, using the loyalty, using the loyalty instinct. In other cases, uh, pointing up, uh, pointing out the uh, similarities in our conditions, uh, reaching for the entente, reaching for the uh, uh, reconciliation. Uh, uh, that's what that's what I that's what I think of in terms of mass action. Uh, but uh, following the mass action, following mass action and the destruction of, uh, of the unrighteous. The second stage, of course, would be the socialization stage. I don't think we should worry right now that all of the people that we're allied with be uh, strict Marxist leaders, just so that they're loyal to revolution. Uh, in, re in reading Mao, you see that everywhere again, he's absorbing, absorbing, absorbing. And in some places, even the, what, the Comprador bourgeois and points all the way to almost to suicide almost. He was compromising with the Comprador bourgeoisie and the national bourgeoisie in China. I'm not saying that we do the same thing, but uh, that's what, uh, basically that's what Comrade uh, Huey Newton was uh, saying in his article, really, you know, his article relating to black capitalism. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people misunderstood that because... I didn't. Hmm? I think I misunderstood that. Um, Did I'm you? Very clear on it, yeah. I mean, I, not that I misunderstood it, it's just that I had a lot of people you know, understanding the context. Everybody that misunderstood that, everybody, of course, that misunderstood that, have not read Mao Zedong's theory of uh, revolution in two stages. I don't know about Mao Zedong's theory, but uh, it's just a question of being in touch with the black community and where the black community is at, which is another thing. Yeah. But you understand that uh, the, the guy that owns a drugstore on the corner, even the mm -hmm. guy that owns a this minute. Let's uh, make a drum go. Hey, brother, how you doing? Hey, right. 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 to see you. Right. All right. All right. I'll give it to you. I was right in the middle of another. <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, on the corner. <laughs> yeah. Even the guy that owns the shoe factory. I'm talking about the black. Um, they aren't capitalists, of course, because of uh, where did they buy this, or their leather from? Their rubber, their strength. Where did they uh, get the building from? Where did they, the machinery? Did he? The opposition, the opposition at present is that guy that's making tools, the machine tools. Uh, the huge, uh, the huge, uh, uh, few families that own around the country. The men that uh, send out expeditionary forces all across the world rip off about 80% of the non-renewable resources. So mm -hmm. that, that's the enemy right now. Not, uh, not the, little, the, the little black cat in the corner who's trying to uh, survive, really. Makes really no more in income than uh, the average one of us, actually. Uh, of course, if we want to compare ourselves with China during their revolution, then uh, we, would, we could call I mean, I'm speaking in, 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 in black right, right now. We could call um, the Nixon's uh, uh, Nixon's uh, uh, Nixon's uh, uh, black capitalism or Nixon's black capitalist. We could call them the Comfortable Bourgeois. But of course, they're slated for destruction after the first stage, after we get rid of the of the uh, of the real enemy. All right. So the basic concept is that uh, attacking the heightened the most heightened contradictions first, and then deal with deal with the smaller contradictions later. later on. The socialization process mm -hmm. comes later on. But really, behind the ideal is that uh, we need uh, allies. We need allies. That's that's what it is. We can't uh, isolate ourselves. That's what he's saying. There's a couple of uh, uh, problems that uh, some people have been dis you know, discussed in the last couple of years. One is... Uh, Wait, before we go any further. Uh, 
the articles that the comrade's been been uh, putting out in the paper, and he you know he's been putting forward for us to try to try to relate to and understand the principal intent. The principal intent is to isolate the targets of revolution. That's, 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 that's his intent. That's his whole intent right now to isolate the targets of the revolution from the forces of the revolution. You did? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, in this understanding that of um, black capitalism, uh, I mean, it's almost to miss the whole, uh, the whole uh, technique behind our, our thrust. We're trying to isolate, isolate the real targets of revolution. Mm-hmm. And uh, at the same time, gather the forces of revolution. Uh, Go ahead now. In, in terms of gathering the forces, uh, there's a lot of division in the movement, you know, let's say in the white, take just the white community alone, uh, women particularly are, are not into uniting with men who constantly oppress them sexually, you know, and constantly treating them as sexual objects, uh, you know, and won't deal with them other than in terms of a fuck, you know, and that's kind of hard for, for a woman to deal with, and they shouldn't have to, you know, to deal with that. No, uh, what what can be done with that? And also, in terms of white people, how can I mean, you know black people ain't going to work with white people who is, who are racist and they, who ain't even deal with? It. I mean, it's understandable the white people are going to be racist. It's understandable that men are going to be sexist when we've been brought up that way. But uh, question is how how what, what point is liberal? Start. What point is being liberal? No, that's a big question. Now, the, the two, that's a two part question that I'm laying to go into. How much, how much time do we have? We got time, no. <laughs> it's an important question. It's one of the most important in the movement right now. Um, I think that's one of the criticisms of the Black Panther Party has been is it has been anti anti uh, gay people for one. No, I don't think so. But if you issued the statement that he's willing to join with anybody who's against the uh, establishment. Statement, statement, and practice are two different things. Sometimes. Of course, they're two different things. Uh, it's, it's practice that's important. And a lot, of, a lot of white people freaked out about practice around that. Uh, it happened around the Revolutionary Constitutional Convention mm-hmm. and uh, other. But do you understand that the term vanguard implies an attempt, an attempt, an attempt to uh, get out in front and pull the people into a proper channel, right? Uh, when that attempt fails, all we can do is attempt again, try again. Try again. And under the, the and I, you, you can't accuse uh, uh, any members of the uh, uh, policy making body. I don't uh-huh. think uh-huh. Uh, anything like that. What they, what, they, what, they, what we're trying to do now is get ourselves together. I'm not uh, trying, trying to make any. Uh, I don't want to accuse anybody. Just I'm saying that um, when when things happen like that, it, it's understandable and it should. That's the way it's going to happen. It's mistakes are going to be made. The question is. How are they going to be dealt with, and how are effective modes of criticism, mm-hmm. and criticism, unity, criticism, unity, going to be carried through? We're going to reanalyze this whole woman question. We're going to analyze the whole thing. I think it's a big difference between uh, the woman question in the in the in the black community and the woman question in the white community. Mm-hmm. Big difference, sure. Big. But uh, I'd like to I'd like to reopen the whole thing all over again. It's open <laughs> in the white community. Yes, I know that. It's open. I'll admit that uh, everybody has to admit that. Uh, that uh, men do in ways uh, fuck over women uh, emotionally, psychologically. And but the reverse is also true. Mm-hmm. See, uh, I think the responsibility should be shared. Let me, let me get this up here. Stick it to these copies. Mm-hmm. I'm a change folks. I think that uh, if we reanalyze this question and stop being uh, so really head up and emotional about it, that uh, we can see that. Uh, I think that we would be able to see that the, the psychological torture, the emotional uh, oppression is a two-way thing. Um, Do you think one could be the reaction to the other? They're interrelated, they're connected. But now, what, what I'd like to point out is, uh, is uh, the roots of the problem. Let's go back. I don't think that uh, Marx dealt with it uh, sufficiently. I don't think that, uh, uh, that Engels dealt with it sufficiently. Uh, uh, I'm talking about the, right now I'm talking about the nation of the family, the state, so forth, from the beginning. Uh, I'd like you to consider right now the very first group of women, or let's say the first woman, or the first group of women. Do you think that uh, any man at that time 
when I, we're going way back, right? You think that any man at that time could have talked his woman into destroying his child or destroying their children? Who really did decide who should play what role? And what is what's what's oppression? What is what is oppression in in this particular vein right here? I think it's uh, I think it's really it's really uh, messing over uh, an individual to give him a role, teach him a set of, of, of responses sure. that he will not later on be able to live up to, and that's what's been happening throughout oh, sure. throughout history yeah. with uh, with this uh, role. Yeah, people understand uh, where that comes from and and who benefits from that. Uh, and that was that expensive labor force of all these women staying home cooking for a lot of fellow uh-huh. men. Oh, you see what I see, man? Uh, it's a possibility that somewhere way back down the long line that uh, a female came up with the idea of oppressing us by putting us out there on the, uh, on the hunting ground to match our skills and strengths with the animals. Hmm? Or put us out there in the field, right? Yeah, yeah a lot of it's also the question of who's winning and who's losing. Oh. <laughs> well, I was saying, I think that if we reopen the whole question, launch a brand new dialect again, try to rediscover all the ways that that we are fucking over each other, oppressing each other, that we'll find that uh, that we have very little, very little to accuse the other of. Uh, and that, that, that's, that's particularly, uh, that's particularly um, so, or true, with uh, the black community. What Huey's what you, you comments in the, um, in the, in the write-up on, uh, on Sweetback? Mm-hmm. I think they were, they were they were pretty poignant and pretty clear. In our case, with uh, the black uh, subculture being uh, a matriarchal culture, in our case, it is the women who are going to have to stop uh, emotionally oppressing their sons and emotionally uh, uh, designating uh, roles that uh, that uh, that further enslave or that further uh, uh, oppress us. Uh, what he was saying. I feel, in essence, was that uh, the only way that uh, that uh, the black woman is going to ever be liberated is standing in the arms of a liberated man, and the only way that that can ever take place is uh, for the raise, the raise the liberator instead of uh, uh, a coward. Uh, you know, a lot, a lot of women like find it uh, in, impeding their. The, the efficiency of the social practice when they're de- when they're working with men and when and men will not relate to them as as comrades you know uh, they find it hard if not impossible to do good political work uh, how can that, that be resolved unless the men start dealing with the stuff that comes down I consider myself uh, the focal motor and I won't go any far but uh uh, I have no problem whatsoever in relating to women as equals if if they can do themselves as equal. But I feel that same way about men. Did he? I feel the same way about another guy. Yeah, but one of the things, one of the reasons that women sometimes initially uh, aren't exemplary revolutionaries at, at, in early stages is because They've been brought up in such a fucked up society, and, told, and the society told them, "You can't make revolution. All you can do is wash dishes." You know, and that's that gets pumped into your head so long that it's very hard for you to well, get out of I that. breezed over that too fast. Maybe I breezed over that too fast. I'm not gonna ask you to wash any dishes. If any dishes be washed in our uh, uh, military safe house, so we wash them together. I I, uh, I concede all that. If she's willing to stand beside me and pull the trigger, it doesn't call for more than three pounds of pressure to pull the trigger on no, a constructed rifle. In, in, in political discussions about what... The and I'm speaking strictly for the military. Well, it, say we're in a military situation and, and there's men and women involved and the decision is made to, to do something or is being made and women are not, are not you know, are intimidated from speaking and men are... are Pushing a lot harder and stuff, and not, you know, not paying attention to what the women are saying, and not giving validity to the women's ideas. Uh, that's not valid at all. You cannot ignore an individual that's standing beside you with a gun. You just cannot do it. I'm saying this: that uh, it's impossible for a man to fuck over a woman if she's got a gun too. You dig what I'm saying? 
I've got a gun, she's got a gun. I cannot push myself in front of her. Well, it's you, a physical impossibility. Well, even, say, for putting out a newspaper, you know, when decisions are made, political decisions that are made that could have far-reaching effects, you know, uh, and women are intimidated from saying, they might not have a gun, but but they're uh, intimidated from... from uh, Psychological intimidation. Yeah. From the past. Things from the past. It's heavy. It's really heavy. I understand that. But I'm saying that don't even begin to resolve the kind of decisions is with the practice. And I'm saying that the first uh, the first step in that practice is uh, is uh, so-called activity, activity, revolutionizing activity. Uh, it's also true that, that one, one thing is when, like, when you're uh, say you're in a military group, it's very you know, clearly important that the people know and understand and can and and love each other mm-hmm. in engaging that kind of activity, and that uh, or live a normal life in spite of the fact that there's war. I'm saying, look. Uh, like you say, it's heavy. Uh, wrapped right up with this same question is uh, uh, another problem that we as blacks have. Uh, the idea of, uh, of just what is disciplined behavior, what is disciplined behavior, and what is uh, uh, authoritarian behavior. Uh, the average black uh, will... Uh, well, he's repelled by the ideal of discipline. I'm talking about the ones in the movement now. I'm talking about the uh, uh, conscious brothers. They find it hard to discipline themselves and, and, and relate to uh, the fact that structure has to exist for anything uh, uh, purposeful to go forward. Uh, the, the two things are wrapped up right there together. Um, in, a, in the woman question, the way things are going to usually generally end up is that uh, some man will be hidden in the cell. And the contradiction will start right there. Hmm. But uh, the two questions are wrapped up. The, the question of discipline, the need for discipline in order to uh, move forward with the real purpose. And then uh, the question of how did and why did uh, the, the male end up in that position of uh, trust, the position of power, or the, the, the position where, where he was... Uh, where he where he is uh, uh, giving the orders. It's a, it's just a complicated, heavy thing. But uh, I think that we're going to have to learn to uh, reconcile ourselves with the fact that uh, uh, from the smallest units, from the smallest cells on up, we're going to have to relate man, woman, as equals. And it won't be easy. It's got to it's got to work itself out. But the only way it can really work itself out, I'm convinced. And uh, I sure hope nobody mistakes this as uh, male chauvinism of any type. But I, I think the only way a problem is going to be resolved is that women become more aggressive. And I'm not talking about aggressive in the sense of, of being counterproductive man, and disrupting. I'm talking about the, uh, coming up with uh, a valid, valid criticism and valid ideas and valid contributions. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of people are interested in what's been going down around your defense committee and what kind of, what's your position on various defense committees and, and how they're functioning. First, I'll take our, ours in particular. Um, our, our, our ideal at first was to involve, uh, of course, the order came down to involve the community as much as possible, to give the community the responsibilities that uh, we felt would help them involve, would help involve them in the uh, uh, anti-establishment activities. The idea was to uh, introduce them to our little substructural, little substructural movement. The idea was to introduce them to uh, uh, anti-establishment in general. Uh, on the supposition that later on, as things progressed, they would move logically into higher levels of anti establishment. You dig what I'm saying? You follow? Yeah, that's what people happened. Well, <laughs> well, it broke down. It didn't work. Yeah, I was, I mean, it didn't I was work. <laughs> well, the reason it didn't work, well, we know why it didn't work. The reason it didn't work is because of uh, a lack of understanding of. Uh, of, of uh, democratic centralism, see, uh, we we right in our midst, uh, we we started uh, drawing people 
who we consider and who were definitely opportunists and uh, then others who were anarchists. And nothing can be done with uh, uh, opportunists or anarchistic behavior. Uh, uh, the ideal of a, of, a, of a committee where everybody is doing their own thing mm -hmm. is kind of productive. Mm -hmm. um, behind the idea, of, out from the outset, we should have uh, clarified, from the outset, behind the whole project, uh, we should have let it be known that uh, we were working under the discipline of, uh, <coughs> of the Black Panther Party, uh, of, you know, the Vanguard Party. And that's, that's the, the most recent move has been to correct that uh, a mistake right there. Uh, of late, we published a de declaration and uh, sent out notices to all the committees that uh, from this point forward, they can't operate, but they have to operate under the guidance and under the review of uh, Central Committee for Black Panther Party. That's the only way, the only possible way for the centralizing, uh, ordering effect to reach down, you know, to the grassroots level. That's the only way to handle it. How do you think the actual practice of the committees will change? Uh, repeat that. How do you think the actual practice of the committees will change in nature? Let's hope that that question, that question, that question there will have to be, of course, uh, uh, solved by of the Central Committee of the Black Panther Party. How effective will they be in uh, harnessing these forces? Uh, I'm, I'm certain that from now on we'll go forward. What kind of what kind of programs do you think will you know new programs and what kind of uh, things will will be initiated now uh, that the change is taking place? Well, uh, the emphasis the emphasis of course now. Uh, will be put on, but we've been trying to emphasize it all along. I'm talking about uh, myself uh, uh, in particular. That our, de our particular defense there in uh, that courtroom isn't as important as the idea of setting up uh, projects to keep this sort of thing from happening. Right. I'm talking about the survival programs, our infrastructure in the black uh, community. Uh, funds raised and so forth like that. I feel that the well, I, I, funds raised, funds raised, and uh, activity going on around our case, I felt right from the beginning would be uh, more productive if they, if, 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 they, if they were channeled into uh, our, our principal survival program. I felt that I could be represented best as a, as an individual who stood for. The survival of the community. I mean, who is always going to stand for the survival of the community. Uh, do you see, like, you, you, the legal motion and stuff? Uh, I don't deal with it at all. Don't relate to it at all. I have a lawyer who's very competent in that particular area. I let him deal with the uh, holding the fascists off, um, stopping the gunfire, keeping them from murdering me. Well, uh, there are those who, those who feel and I'm among them that it's probably real important that you get out um, with your ideas and these ideas be able to be presented to the community. Uh, and, I, and a lot of people don't see that as a contradiction to doing political work and, and building the survival programs and other programs. Uh, and what about that? <laughs> I know. You must be into that too. In other words, uh, <coughs> in other words you're saying that uh, there's a possibility of me um, martyring myself if I don't concentrate more on the legal aspect of the case? Is that what you're saying? Well, yeah, there's a possibility of you martyring yourself, but it's not a question of concentrating more or less. It's, uh, it's, I'm not clear that it's a uh, contradiction mm -hmm. to work to exhaust not, all that's, means. I, that's just what I was going to say. It's not a contradiction. If, 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 if it's to our interest and it's to my interest, you see, to let the people know that I stand for and all we will stand for is their survival. And I think the best way to get that across is to, uh, in one or two places where the party has a, uh, has a, uh, uh, the community uh, pretty well uh, organized, to uh, let them know that, uh, that the uh, funds from, uh, raised from uh, uh, our particular efforts 
went into the construction of this particular uh, cottage industry or this particular clinic. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to the final uh, explosion, when it comes to the point of uh, uh, whether or not I'm going to survive or whether or not I'm going to, you know, uh, I'm not depending on them. I'm not depending on them to surround San Quentin and snatch me out of here. I'm depending on uh, the vocal motor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we need to say anything else. Uh, but uh, it really pains me to be misrepresented. Uh, and I feel that the. Uh, sort of what happened around that. I feel that I haven't been misrepresented. In support uh, in uh, in areas where uh, people were carrying on the uh, yeah. uh, the little button wars and the uh, pamphlet wars and the uh, uh, kind of productive activity uh, in general pie sales and so forth like that. All right, all those things are good. And if we're gonna have a raffle, let's raffle shotguns. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to seem uh, this overtly critical of the weatherman because uh, I dig him. Uh, and we're not going to compete over who's the vanguard party. That's not the point. But the point is, is uh, right now is uh, unconditional freeing of the people, liberation, and how we can feel uh, uh, the end day we talked about a while ago. Uh, I'd like to offer this as I'd like to offer this as uh, as a possibility. It is a possibility that uh, Bernadine and, uh, and uh, the rest of the people involved there, the weathermen, uh, see the focal motor theory in a much broader sense than we see it. See, we're relating to it as it relates to us in our particular condition. We say the objective conditions are in the black community for a revolution today, that uh, all that's missing here and there are a few of the subjective. The objective conditions are there. The subjective conditions are missing here and there. And uh, we're moving forward on that. Uh, with our programs and with uh, with uh, our movement. And by movement, I mean uh, the shootout on Central, August 7th. And all attempts to, and all actual, on all actual uh, efforts made to uh, put the fascists to death. Uh, but like I was saying, perhaps the weathermen do understand the mobile, focal motor theory and are looking at it in a much broader sense than we are. Uh, like before when I said the, the ideal embraces in its essence, in its heart, two, two distinct.